guys welcome back to my channel my name is T Louise for those of you that don't know and if you do know and you're returning what's poppin how are you so I wanted to do a little something different on my channel I want to start incorporating like these sit down intimate videos I believe that it's so important to have conversation and to talk about different things um, that I go through, that you guys may go through. Um, and I love to talk, so if you're my friend, you already know that. You are no stranger to that. And if you watch my videos, you already should know that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to start incorporating some of these nice sit down videos on my channel. So this first video, I wanna talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, um, and that is anxiety or the feeling of overwhelmness. Um, I think 2020 definitely got us to a place where we recognize, okay, we are very anxious people and we deal with anxiety. And I didn't even know I had anxiety. I feel like there were so many of those different moments, um, you know, during the heightened COVID times, um, myself included. I was like, wait, so my heart racing like that, that's anxiety? Oh, me feeling like I'm stressed out and I can't breathe, that's anxiety? I had no idea, right? Um, and it took some time learning me and what I was feeling, what I was going through, how to cope, how to move forward, how to, how to breathe, honestly. And so I wanted to make a video talking about that because I feel like we are still, maybe not so much like in the heightened COVID times, um, but you know when you have COVID and they say you have like COVID brain, you know, fine from COVID, you still kind of have like that COVID fog. So like your brain is still like a little fuzzy. I feel like that's what we're experiencing right now when it comes to like anxiety. It's like we remember how prevalent and how like heavy it was on us, you know, during the heightenedness of COVID. And you know, it's still kind of lingering here and there. And then there's like other things that are also big factors into our anxiety and stuff like that. So I want to make a video that kind of speaks to how we can move forward um, and how we can hopefully not walk with anxiety. Um, because I believe in the scripture that tells us to be anxious for nothing. Um, but sometimes how do we not be anxious? You know what I'm saying? God would not give us something ultimately that he didn't want us to learn how to manage. And I think that that is the main focus here. And so I have a couple of tips and tricks that I personally use um, to help myself stay from being anxious or stay from staying anxious. Um, because again, we're human. We're gonna have those moments where we slip up. Um, but like, let's learn how to maintain that. Let's learn how to manage that. Let's learn how to properly work through that, okay? So, tip number one. Um, I think it is very important to speak life to yourself. I think that in a world where you're ridiculed about every little thing, <laughs> we need some sense of comfort, okay? We need some sense of consolation. And of course, I'm going to be bringing some scriptures because we can't do this thing alone, okay? We need that book of life. So if you turn to Psalm 94 and 19, and I'll put it on the screen, um, one of the scriptures says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. Consolation is comfort. So when we are feeling down and out, we need to find what is comforting for us, whether that be a good comfort meal, penny, wholesome show that just makes us feel good on the inside, whether that be a time of reading and journaling or whatever the case may be, or even hanging out with friends and family. I find that though I love people, Sometimes I have to retract and I have to spend some time alone down during the heightenedness of COVID time. I need a recharge, okay? I need a refresh. So some wholesome things for me would be going to go get my nails done. Yes, getting my nails done is very relaxing and therapeutic for me. 
going to go get my hair done, um, watching a YouTube video. Guys, when I say I don't watch TV, I watch YouTube, I completely mean that. Like, I can't tell you what's on television right now, but I can tell you who just uploaded a vlog and what vlog I just watched. I don't know where that country accent came from. We're gonna move right along. <laughs> so yeah, find something that is comforting and that'll bring joy to your soul and ease, ultimately, your anxiety. Another scripture that is very helpful is Proverbs 12, 25, and it reads, An anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. So that brings me to step number two, which is finding a person or people that can speak life into you and can help you out. Typically, when I'm feeling overwhelmed or anxious, I'll literally call up my mom or I'll call up my sister or my friends or my brother and I'm like, hey, you know, I feel X, Y, and Z. And they may not even fully understand why I'm feeling X, Y, and Z, but they'll be able to speak into my life and correct me in such a kind way that'll redirect my path, you know? It'll redirect what I'm feeling. It'll redirect the energy that I'm giving towards the anxiousness and make me be like, you know what? Maybe I'm not actually anxious or maybe I don't need to be anxious in this scenario. Maybe all I needed to do was to talk it out, get it off my chest and move on, you know? And then I'm one of those people and let me know down in the comments if you're like me, but I'm one of those people that cannot stay mad for long. Like if we have an issue, I'm trying to figure out, okay, how can we move past this? Because I do not like being sad. I do not like being mad. I don't like to be angry. I don't like to spend too much time on that because negative energy is just like so taxing for the brain, right? And I can't fully think properly if I'm sitting here trying to figure out, okay, how can I make sure that I'm, you know, not showing her kindness or not being nice to her or not smiling at her because I don't like, bro, it's too much. Like, let it go, you know? Um, so when it comes to being anxious and stuff like that, I'm already trying to figure out, okay, what can I do to quickly get over this? Because I cannot stay here, right? And the things that it does to my brain, the way that it affects my mental, it's just not beneficial for me. So being able to find my people that are able to speak life into me and help redirect that energy is pivotal for my growth pivotal for me to get up out of my funk and to move right along. So number three, this used to be difficult for me because I am such a planner and I still am such a planner, but I have learned that being spontaneous is actually way more fun. And yes, while I can be a planner and yes, while I can still be organized, I can also have so much fun just letting anything that flies fly, right? I cannot always control things. And I think that was a huge thing for me. I had to let go of the essence of wanting to be in control. I had to let that go because that doesn't help you in the long run. And that only adds more stress, you know what I'm saying, to the situation. And we just won't well, time for that, okay? So if you go to Matthew 6, 34, which I'm coming with descriptions, okay, you feel me? But if you go to Matthew 6, 34, it says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day is enough trouble of its own. What? Are you serious? Don't worry about tomorrow to a planner who likes to worry about the very tomorrow that we're talking about? Yes, literally throw the plans away, okay? Have structure, okay? And in, in, in wisdom, you know, throw the plans away. But like legit, everything will not be controlled by your hands and everything will not be, um, you know, conjured up by, by your own might. There's sometimes you have to just let things go with the flow and be easy, breezy, beautiful cover girls. And if you're a guy, a cover boy. Moving right along. Uh, but no, but seriously, like we have to remember that every single day has its own set of troubles. So while I may want to worry about Saturday, this present day, Friday, it already has a bunch of troubles that I need to, need to be thinking about and I need to put my attention to and I need to figure out and I need to, you know, work on at, at, at this present moment. So regardless of what we think or what, regardless of what we feel or regardless of, you know, what we may want to do, the beauty 
of just letting things fall where they may fall. I say this all the time, what'll be, will be. And I know that I didn't make up that, that saying, but whoever made it up knew exactly what they were talking about because it's so beneficial. Whatever will be, will simply be. And I can't make something be just because I wanna make something be if it's not supposed to be. And no good thing will be withheld from me. If it is good and if it is of God, I will have it. If I don't have it, it means that it was not good for me at the time or good for me at all, says the Lord. And it's not for me, period, point blank, period. So keep that in mind and make sure that as you are walking and moving, you're remembering to just let it go. Let it be, let whatever will be to be. My fourth one is super simple, but it is something that is very near and dear to me. Um, and that is just keeping true the love of God in my life. Um, it is so easy for us to feel like we are unseen or unloved or unfocused upon um, just because there's so many different things that are going on in life and life circumstances that was heavy. And life circumstances definitely can get us to be in our head a lot. But like Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, and I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither fears of for today, nor worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And when I remember that God truly does love me and he wants to see the best in me and he wants the best for me, I have to do everything in my power to silence everything else that's going on in my brain, to silence every other doubt, every other fear, every other worry, because you know what? Nothing will separate me from the love of God. And if I have God's love, that's all I'm needing. If I'm connected to the source, there should be no reason that I'm stressed out about something. He's able to feed the birds, like his, his word tells us. The birds don't worry about where they're getting their food from, so why do I worry? You know what I'm saying? So why am I worried? If he cares enough about them, why would I question if he cares an, a morsel about me? What? No, like that is so disrespectful to even think that my God doesn't care that much, if not more, more actually yes certainly more about me crazy so because I know that he cares about me because I know that he loves me because I know that he's chasing me down and he's seeking me out you know like that's all I can't I can't give too much power and I can't give too much energy to worrying and to being anxious that might be easier said than done but let's figure out how to make that a reality you know I don't want that to be easier said than done all the days of my life. I want to be so sure that God loves me and that if he wants it for me, it'll happen. And if he doesn't want it for me, it won't happen and move on. I don't want to question, well, on, I think, well, maybe it won't. No, <laughs> no, like let's be so sure. Okay, let's work on being sure. The last tip that I'll leave you guys with, kind of piggyback off the fourth one, but it's basically to have confidence, not in yourself, but in God. And in turn, you'll have some type of self-confidence because God is not a God that lifts himself up, but then leaves you hanging. You'll never be high and dry with the king. You'll never be without with God. If he's on your team, if he's on your side, you have so much self-awareness and self-confidence, you should. And if you don't, let's reevaluate. Is God really on your side? Is God really on my team? Is God really the one navigating me through this thing called life? Is God really the one that's pushing me forward and making me persevere and, you know, get through these things, these these tough you know, seasons, these these rough, isolating moments of life, you know, because God's word is very clear um, on who he is and God's word will never fail because God will never fail. And because he will never fail, I 
will never fail. And we win and we know this. And so we just have to be so sure and so confident in Christ. Um, and just know that God wants the best for us, like legitimately. I know sometimes we get in our heads and we're like, but he, he gave me X, Y, and Z, or he put me in this family, or he took my mom away, or he took my dad away. Or, you know, I have so much pain and hurt from people in my past. Or, you know, why did that one thing happen to me when I was younger? Or the list honestly truly goes on. And I definitely feel for every person that's ever been impacted or hurt or whatever the case may be. Because that is a real thing. And I don't ever want you to think that I'm downplaying anything that any of us has been through. Because i got a story too, you know. And I, I have felt the opposing side of what I'm talking about right now. And in my prayer closet with God saying, why did you let me go through this? Or why did you take me through that? Or why did I have to know that person or go to that church or be a part of that? Or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I get you 1000%. But what I've learned is that my confidence isn't in me or in man. My confidence is solely in God. Every person, myself included, will fail me. Okay, I will fail myself sometimes. And we have to realize that we will fail ourselves, we will fail others, and others will fail us, right? So I don't put my confidence in people anymore. I used to put expectations on my friends and I would be broken when they would fail. <laughs> because why are you putting people in, in a certain box and putting expectations on them that they never signed up for, they never agreed with? And I'm, I'm wanting my friends to be the type of friend that I am to others or the type of friend that I am to them. And that's not realistic. They weren't wired that way. You know what I'm saying? They didn't go through the same trauma and things that you dealt with that made you become the friend that you are now. You know what I mean? And so me coming and having this unrealistic, um, you know, expectation on people that I love and then being distraught when they fail me based off something they never agreed to it was because my my confidence wasn't in the right place in the first place my confidence your confidence has to be in God and he's the only one that is so sure like he is the most solid of rocks <laughs> that we can stand upon truly Truly, he is the solid rock. I know some of y'all might be married. Some of y'all might have boyfriends that you like or girlfriends that you like. No, but my girl or my guy is down, okay? Like, you don't know. My best friend is a rider, okay? Like, she is that and he is that. Even me, okay? You see me and Janessia, we are as thick as thieves, right? Blood couldn't make us closer. And that is my girl, thick and thin, right? You've seen her with me through every crazy, rough, hard, dry season. But even in times where we even have issues within our friendship, we realize, all right, the basis of this friendship is God. So if God wants this friendship to work, that he will see to it that it will work. And we will do our due diligence in making sure to keep God as the forefront and the center of this friendship because he ultimately is the foundation. And in being confident in God, um, this last scripture, 1 Corinthians seven thirty two says, I want you to be free from all anxieties. We have to trust that God truly does want that for us. He does not want us to live with anxiety. He does not want us to live with stress or the feeling of being overwhelmed. We're going to have those moments where that is our portion at the moment. We're gonna have those moments, trust me. It's it's inevitable. But simply put, we don't have to stay there. So in essence, I hope this video helped you. I hoped, uh, I hope that each and every scripture can speak to you. I'm gonna list them all down in the description box. Um, I'm going to start doing these more frequently. Just talking to you guys. Um, you guys can send in different topics that you want me to talk about. Um, different things that you want me to touch on, give you my opinion on. Um, I will be honest, most of my opinions will be backed by scripture. Just because I feel like as a Christian woman of God, I don't want to necessarily steer somebody in the way of what I'm feeling and it's not legit. 
Um, and then I also want to put a, a disclaimer out. If anything I said may have been offensive um, or whatever the case may be, please don't take any offense to what I have to say. And let's legit be adult about it. Let's have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I totally do not believe that I have it all together. And I totally don't think that I am the end all be all and what I say goes. Because there are so many different instances or times where I've been corrected and I get to see something in a different way that I never saw before. So if um, that is the case at any point in time, please, I implore that. I appreciate that. I love that. Um, because just as I want you all to grow, I want to grow personally too. Um, and then additionally, another disclaimer, um, if I've said anything, you know, that you're like, okay, I want to take that and I want to run with it and you know, whatever. And it, um, it helps you, please let me know. I definitely want to, um, be an encouragement and to continue to encourage and to just continue growing this community. Um, I am so grateful to God for such a platform. Um, and I only hope for this to get bigger and better um, with time. So please be sure to send this video to somebody that you think it'll be beneficial for. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend, like, comment, share, subscribe, you know, the whole, the whole jam. Um, and yeah, let's, let's do this thing. Let's really be sold out Christians for the Lord. And in a day and age where, um, it's the black and white is getting so hazy. The, the black and white is very much gray. Um, I want to be on the right side and I want all my people with me to be on the right side too. Um, and so I want to encourage you. I want you to encourage me. Um, and let's do this together. Amen. <laughs> I'm like, amen, like we in church. But like legit, let's do this together. Um, I love you guys. Sophia, do you want to say goodbye? Sophia, say bye to the people. This is Sophia, you guys, if you didn't know. I have a cutie little puppy girl. Sophia, what do you want to tell the people? Jeez. We want to tell the people. Do you want to talk to them? Say, I love you guys. <laughs> she does not care. Okay, but um, thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your week. I'm going to try to make these videos weekly. Uh, stay on me to be um, accountable and to be consistent. Um, I love y'all. And again, have a great, great week. And remember, anxiety has no hold on you. And you are able to do anything and everything that you so choose and desire. And never forget to always think to yourself happy. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Cause I'm rolling.